Sun, the sunrise, moving faster than the speed of moonlight, just as our blinking can outrun our sight. Eyelids being the shadows of our eyes. I have seen the shadows lengthen the day, stretch out a minute into two or three, or hide an hour like a bird in a tree. Asleep at dusk, the hour dreams away. I have seen a shadow's hands on the clock, its skull aloof, indifferent to time. <coughs> Not so those hands, forcing the clock to chime, whipping the tick along faster than talk. I have seen my shadow run without me, a fleeing murderer of memory. This one is also by Dali, The Image Disappears. And for those of you who um, may know the painting of, of um, uh, Vermeer, uh, several of the things about this painting um, mimic Ver Vermeer, and that's why I mention him in this. The first image to disappear is a recovered memory, now a vanishing Vermeer. The woman is just scenery, like the map and the checkered floor, looking out a window or door. She's pregnant and holds in her hand a weapon, an artist's stylus. She's been swallowed by her husband, right in front of all of us. Both of them will disappear because neither is an image, but an embodiment of fear, a man and wife erased by rage. This painting is called The Disintegration of the Persistence, no, the Disintegration of the Persistence of Memory. There is no time there's only memory, rows of sodden boxes beneath the sea, so pure that even the sardines have dreams of swimming through the sun's occluded beams. A bullet from the brain becomes a memory box, transfigured by the melting of the clocks. Floating mountains and rootless trees in pieces will linger so until duration ceases. These aren't headstones of recollection impervious to breath and desiccation. They can become too numerous to count. I, for one, would like to know the amount. Each box can, retains its substance, color, and shape, but when it's opened, nothing can escape. And this is by the artist Paul Clay, one of my favorites, called Dream City. I've lived in nine cities, but dream of only five. Perhaps where I lived as a child were all dreamed out in anxious ecstasies like a bee's in its hive. I've remapped the five over the years with new routes through collapsed avenues to ruined homes and maze-like schools to workplaces with all doors locked, churches painted green inside and out, and bedrooms where the rain leaks through cracks that won't be caught. I often dream the same city night after night, which then fades for a time from, from hypnagogic blight. I run and walk and crawl these streets and sometimes fly. So often cityscape replaces memory and new rooftops erase the blackboard of the sky. At least the me who lives these dreams is always me. Um, this one is very special to me. The, um, the body <coughs> work is um, a painting by Paul Clay called Ad Parnassum. The top work is a shawl that was um, knitted by my wife Ruth, who sits over here. And um, it only took her about a year to do that work. I, to me, it's just an incredible work of art. I want it up on the walls forever. She says, hell no, I'm going to wear it. It's beautiful. <laughs> At any rate, I was, I was somewhat taken aback when I came across this and wanted to write about it with the similarity between the two, so I combined them. Though there's no such thing, a perfected fate would lie in details, not some pinnacle. Our occluded sun irradiates each imagined fleck and bright circle, scarcely noticed in the mounting moments among our numberless joys and torments. If we fail to see the thread in the weave, the speck of blue gold in a lover's eye, look closer and ignore all reasons why. 
It's more important to see than believe. Don't wait, for in the accumulation and remembrance of every color's rhyme, each patterned and cascading emotion, there is a pyramid worthy to climb. This one also by Paul Clay is, is called Fish Magic. Is the sky to fish what the celestial is to men? Do their eyes, being lidless, see more clearly the dimming when moon eclipses the sun? Do they wish as they die to swim above the sea? Bonefish, flounder, barracuda, and drum chaunt spells and curses from within a cauldron to tauten the cord and raise the draped muslin, unveiling the face of the ancient clock tower, while a three-eyed girl grabs at potted flowers and in a corner a boy in a dunce cap cowers. The gods send down chum and baited hooks, dangling constellations and spiral galaxies, daring us to hope, to aspire, daring us to look past transparent and unfathomable seas. And finally, by Clay, Container for Stars. We thought when we were the heart of the universe, the constellations accumulate the divine. We chanted as we watched the gods slowly disperse, replaced by single stars and Albert Einstein. A star can fall. There's, there's too much of velocity, distance, and duration in our current science because there's no such thing as specificity. Even if we could fly a billion light years hence, what we want to see would be just as far away. We might find a planet where men would want to stay. Life could be altered, the sky would remain the same. New constellations, we'd have to give new names. The discovered universe is not what we sought. The only container of the stars is a thought. Okay, now moving into a whole different area. Um, I have several poems here that were uh, written based on works by my daughters. And my daughter Julia, sitting right there, the first one is based on this. Uh, she actually wrote this based upon the poem that I'm going to conclude with tonight. And I'm going to give her a plug. She is curating a... a um, a uh, show at the is it Wunderkammer Gallery in January, which is all based on poems written based on paintings, paintings ba written or painted based on poems and on and on. Uh, and so that's what she's done here. She, I, I wrote a poem based on a painting, and then she wrote a painting based on this poem. And it's called the Ruler Tree. And I need to say one more thing. Um, the, the shapes here, the white shapes, um, which are the rulers, are um, taken from the work of Marcel Duchamp, who came up with this notion of stoppages, which were a kind of variable ruler, varying lengths, and he did several paintings of them. But they all looked exactly like this. And I'll come back to that with the last poem. Rulers, like any tool of measurement, define the point of stoppage at each end of a thing, not the distance in between. The moon and earth limit the firmament. The lunar clock compresses each second. Our sight stops the scene short with the unseen. I greedily pluck from the ruler tree the limitations that will set me free. Someone has marked the bowl. I must hurry to get back and pluck all I can carry. Evil men will soon come to cut it down. Perhaps they watch from that darkened prison. I'll have enough to build an entire town if I stay unblinded by my vision. This is by my uh, other daughter, Alice. I, I live with a family of artists, which is wonderful. Um, <coughs> I have absolutely no talent in the area of visual arts. Um, but Alice is a student down at Heron School of, of Art in Indianapolis. This is called Wing Song. The sand wasp and the cecropia moth pray to the ruby-throated hummingbird. Each thrums its own avian oath. Its flight they worship, swift and blurred, almost wingless, their supreme art. They envy throwing oneself like a dart. 
The sand wasps stun cicadas and bury them deep in nests for their larvae to eat. The mouthless cecropia must hurry to mate or their larvae become parasite meat. But the hummingbird need, need only sip sweets and build a nest with the first mate it meets, or having some objection speed away, freedom for which the wasp and the moth pray. This is a painted version of the image that we first started out with, and it's called the scoop tree. And this is by Julia. Each bare tree is all that's left of today, and those with leaves will vanish soon enough. My daughter paints what we call the scoop tree, home of a squirrel who never ran away when nuts could be scooped up, frantically stuffed in his cheeks, ignoring my child and me. I wrote a story about the squirrel, read it to her often when she was young. Now that she's no longer a little girl, she's painted what the tree's been all along. There is as much of life in line and ink as in the existence of tree or tail. Fail to see or to concentrate, don't blink, and what counts will dull, memory will fail. Another one by Alice. This is actually our home, our current home, in three images. She, she drew this and reproduced it, but she put us on the home on stilts in, in water. Um, and I, as a child, lived in the Philippines. I, I was part of a military family, and all of the homes in the Philippines are also built on stilts. Mm. So that's, both of those things are together in this poem. This one is untitled. We should all live in homes on stilts, as I did once and now again. Officers' quarters in the Philippines, like go-down barns, were built on cement pillars, typhoon rains relentlessly surged between. My daughter depicts our home high above the ocean, a rowboat tied close to negotiate the moat, barely visible through foggy foam. We'll all be well when the storms blow in and the waves swarm, she holds the image in her hands, raising her home above dry land. Back to Julia. This one is called the Secretary Bird. Called the Archer for his quiver-like crest, he's a snake stomper, earthbound hunter, stalking the edge of brush fires, gobbling reptiles and rodents fleeing their nests. Like all raptors, he has no eye but hunger. No thought that doesn't lead to swallowing. He has the selfish absorption of an artist. The world disappears, leaving him to create a bitter order composed of what he ate. Though he is never satisfied, never at rest, he glides in flight like a dream of sleep, his crane legs forgotten, his wings sweep away the wind. Soon, he'll wonder why he flew flying just to fly, something we can never do. This is the last one by the girls, and this one is called Hands and Feet. Um, you may, may have seen images by uh, um, an artist that was centuries ago. His name was Archimboldo, and he made faces that were made of of all sorts of fruit in one case, or fruit and vegetables, or, or fish and shellfish. Well, she has here made um, uh, a similar image um, just by using hands and feet. I am not the amalgam of my parts, not the knuckles, the joints, the palms. These are merely the hands of my heart. I am always hot. I've never been calm. Sometimes I am nothing but an eye. Seen through the circle of sight, the darkness is all I need to know why. My grinning makes my knuckles white. My thoughts are like wriggling fingers, and my emotions are clenched fists. I am my own twisted harbinger. Look at me, you can't resist. But we are all skin, sinew, and bone, running from each other alone. <laughs> 